Hey everyone, Sam here from Sugar Spun Run, and today I'm showing you how to make key lime pie cookies. If you're a fan of key lime pie, I think you're going to love this cookie variation. This is a super simple recipe with a buttery cookie crust and a sweet and slightly tart key lime filling. Now to get started, the first thing you're going to need is one cup of unsalted butter and you want this to be softened. We're going to add this to a large bowl. To the butter, we are going to add one third cup of granulated sugar and a third cup of tightly packed light brown sugar. You're going to need an electric mixer or you can definitely use a stand mixer if you have one. And we're going to cream together the butter and sugar until everything is nicely combined. The next thing you need is one large egg yolk and this is just the yolk you're going to want to discard of the white or save it for a different recipe. We'll also add a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract and again, use your electric mixer to beat everything together until it's completely combined. This is looking pretty good, so we can go ahead and set this aside, and now we're going to need a separate bowl for our dry ingredients. We're going to start with two cups of all-purpose flour. Now, because key lime pie is traditionally made with a graham cracker crust, and these cookies are going to be serving as the crust for our key lime pie cookies, we are going to be adding some graham cracker crumbs into the mix. This is one half cup of graham cracker crumbs. We'll also add two teaspoons of cornstarch, or if you're in the UK, you may know this as corn flour. This is a simple ingredient that helps those cookies keep their shape, keeps them nice and soft, and keeps them from spreading too much in the oven. And finally, we'll add one half teaspoon of salt and stir everything together. All right, now all that's left to do is we're going to add our dry ingredients to our wet ingredients. And we're going to do this gradually, just adding about a fourth of this flour mixture at a time. This dough can get pretty dry and we wanna make sure that all of that flour is getting nicely incorporated. So I'm just gonna use a spatula to make sure I'm scraping the sides and bottom of the bowl so that all of our ingredients are well combined. So this is actually looking pretty good. So we can go ahead now and start scooping our cookie dough. You're going to want each cookie dough ball to be about two teaspoons in size. Roll the dough between your hands until it's smooth and there are no cracks in the dough. You can set that down and now you can either just use your thumb or I like to use the rounded back of a teaspoon and just gently indent each cookie. Now, as you can see, I'm placing these cookies pretty close together. That's because we're not going to be baking them right away. They're going to need to go in the freezer and chill before we can bake them. So all I've done at this point is I have a surface. I'm using a cookie sheet that's lined with wax paper. Parchment paper would also work. Just You just want something nonstick. Somewhere you can place your cookies and easily move them to and from the freezer. Okay, so now these cookies are going to need to go over to the freezer where they will need to chill for 30 minutes before we can go any further. Now, this is just going to help prevent them from spreading in the oven. About 15 minutes before your cookies are finished chilling, you're going to want to go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. My oven has been preheating for a while now and my cookies have finished chilling, so we can go ahead and place them on a baking sheet. What I'm going to do here is I have a cookie sheet that I've lined with parchment paper. I'm not gonna bake them on the sheet that I portioned them out on because that's lined with wax paper and they're just too close together. So I'm going to go ahead and place these cookies about one inch apart. They're not going to spread very much, but you do wanna give them a little breathing room for while they're baking. Now we'll go ahead and pop these into our preheated oven where they will need to bake for about 10 to 11 minutes. Now often when my key lime pie cookies come out of the oven, the centers that we indented before baking them, they might have puffed up a little bit. You want to have nice kind of deep wells because we're going to be filling this with key lime pie filling. So the best way to get those back is just to take a clean tablespoon, rounded tablespoon, and just slightly re-indent each of those imprints. Now we're going to want to let these cool completely before we fill them with our key lime pie filling, but while they're cooling, we can go ahead and start making that. Now what we're going to need to do is head over to our stovetop, and you're just going to need a small saucepan. To this saucepan, we are going to add one cup of white chocolate chips. Now I really recommend using a high quality premium type white chocolate chip. I really don't recommend generic for this recipe. We'll also need one half cup of sweetened condensed milk, and this is only one half cup, so you are not using the whole can here. Finally, you'll need three tablespoons of key lime juice, and make sure this is key lime juice and not regular lime juice. 
fresh or bottled will work fine in this recipe. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our heat on our stovetop to low or no higher than medium low. We're going to stir this mixture continuously until it's melted, until the chocolate's melted and the mixture is well combined. Once everything is nice and melted together, I like to add just a little bit of lime zest. This is mostly for color, so you can use just a regular lime or a key lime, either one will be fine. Now, once it begins to bubble, you're going to want to go ahead and remove this from heat. And now we are ready to start portioning that filling into our prepared cookies. Now, you can just use a spoon to do this. I like to use a small one teaspoon sized cookie scoop. It just makes the process a little bit easier. And I will leave a link to this specific scoop in the description below. Now, ideally, you would want to let that filling sit for about 30 minutes, maybe even an hour before you dig in. And just keep in mind that it is going to stay tacky even once it's had time to cool completely. So these are not ideal for stacking. All right, well, I am going to go enjoy this. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Mmm. Hey, if you guys enjoyed today's key lime pie cookie video, I would really appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, if you enjoy today's cookie recipe, here are a few others you might like as well.